Hello, Icron fans! This is Shadow 33 bringing you the semifinals of the Temporal Anomalies Season 1 Acron Tournament. These will be two semifinals, and in the finals we played right after. First match is between Haiku and Numbers. The first map being Frostbite, they've just decided, all worked out. And we just see the pregame image, and that will be. So, Haiku and Numbers, we've both seen a fair bit of. Both players have shown they're quite skilled at this game. And numbers especially, actually, very new. I was not entirely surprised to see him get this far, but I hadn't seen him before this tournament very much, so very well done to him. Haiku has also done a very good job. He's only lost one game. Numbers has lost two within the series, but neither of them has obviously lost their entire series, otherwise they wouldn't be here right now. So Haiku and Numbers, they are going to be playing first. Then after them, it's going to be Google Frog and Schalke. The winner of both of those matches will be playing in a best of five finals. And the winner of that wins the whole tournament. So this is the last day of the tournament. Everyone who's been watching, thank you very much for watching. Everyone who hasn't been watching, well, you're probably watching this on YouTube. So thank you for watching it on YouTube. That's still YouTube news. Or you're watching all the videos. So this has been an interesting old first tournament. Lots of games. And lots of technical problems, which we've managed to work through, and will be a lot smoother for Season 2. So don't worry about that. Season 2 will be much better than Season 1, and we'll be starting... Well, we'll be probably starting up some sign-ups probably early October, but just keep your eyes open. We'll announce it when we're starting that. But this is the last day for the Season 1 tournament, and it should be a very exciting day. These players have gotten... This far, playing quite well, and I'm sure they're going to just keep going as they are because they have a lot on the line. So, as we see, like I said, Frostbite is the first map tonight. It is going to be a four-player map, so much larger, more spawn locations, a bit harder to find your opponent. Not too much harder, but you still have to bear in mind that there are four spawn locations, so it could be a close position game or a far position game, and it changes subtly how that works. The rust distance changes. And it looks like actually the game's going to be starting pretty soon, or I think there might be a mistake on Melvin's part. And he should be starting up fairly quickly, although that, yeah, it was probably a mistake. So, oh, I'm sorry, we seem to be having some technical issues. Anyway, yeah, so Frostbite, we've seen before several times, actually. It's been a very popular map this tournament. And it's a pretty decently medium-sized map. It's... Not got a huge amount of resources, but it does have enough to supply for fairly long games and fairly large army games. It's not the sort of map that's going to be super problematic for any big games. There we go, now I get proper cast. So it's not going to be super problematic for big games. People are going to be able to harvest resources and be able to keep their armies going throughout the game. Probably both players will be taking the other main bases if the game goes on long enough. Of course, we have seen there's a lot of unprotected areas, and it's very difficult to establish a safe expansion because there aren't really a lot of expansions that can be qualified as safe. There's some expansions that have smaller choke points. There's a natural, we have the center of the screen right now. But overall, it's not that easy to get a safe expansion. And the players seem to be having some issues connecting right now. Anyway, once that gets sorted out, we'll see how they actually work out in this game, on this map. I... No Haiku has played on this map. I'm pretty sure Numbers has also played on this map. I think we actually have had some major technical issues, so we will have to work those out. Anyway, we should be getting that sorted out fairly quickly within the next couple minutes. In the meantime, I'll continue rambling on. So Frostbite, like I said, is a large map. It's one of the two four-player maps we have in there, along with Desecrated Temple. And it's a map designed to, like I said, have a fair amount of resources, but not a huge amount. It's actually... More designed for 1v1, really, than four players. 1v1 with four player slots you can randomize between. And this allows, like I said, for freer expansions. There actually have been some games in the tournament so far where people have gone and just built a second base in one of the other expansion points. So it's certainly the sort of map where there's a lot of freedom in what you can do, but it's not a map where you actually have a huge amount of space to work with compared to a lot of other four-player maps, and not a huge amount of resources compared to a lot of four-player maps. So it's still a bit more comparable to two-player in size, but it does have enough resources that if four people were on it, it should work fine. So once again, we're starting trying to get the players in the game, and I'm still not 100% sure. 
No, I seem to be having some really odd connection issues right now. I apologize for this. It's very annoying. I'm not sure why we're having these connection issues, but we are having connection issues. Haiku and numbers have both stated in the IRC that they have not been able to connect to the game. Very strange. So, it's going to restart. So, as you before, Numbers is a player who's, maybe just while the games are starting, just get the pre-game image showing Haiku and Numbers. Numbers is a very, as seen before, he's a pretty tricky player. He's pretty good at defense, and he does often, he does have some tricks up his sleeve when it comes to the way he plays back here. Haiku, on the other hand, has been a bit more of a solid player. He d- has gone for his standard infantry rush. He's also gone for other strategies. He's actually been, he's been one of the most race-flexible players this entire tournament, which has been very impressive to watch. I'm not sure if he's going to do that tonight. I seriously doubt it, seeing as this is the semifinals, and he is against the player. The players he's against numbers has fought his way up as much as Haiku has. So while Haiku is probably the stronger player, just given that the record is more in his favor, it's only in his favor by one loss. So these players are probably fairly evenly matched, and will be a very interesting game. I seriously think Haiku is going to just risk it. He may risk game one or two on an off-race play, because he, of course he knows that his opponent numbers will probably un- probably expect CISO, but may expect just any race at all. So I don't expect to see Haiku doing too much race switching, but if he is going to do it, it'll be in the first game or two, either the first game or the second game if he wins the first game. Numbers, on the other hand, has been solidly playing Vector this entire time. I don't expect him to be playing any other race because thus far he's not played any other race, and having seen him play outside of the tournament, he also pretty much never plays any other race. So I don't see him playing a race other than Vector. If he does, I would be really surprised because, as I mentioned before, playing an off race is really risky in a tournament. It can work because your opponent's not going to expect it and may not be as well practiced against that race if they were practicing against your main race to better practice for the tournament. But this this game hasn't been developed as long as many other games, especially StarCraft, for example, competitive games. So the metagame isn't quite so developed that switching race is going to benefit you by confusing your opponent who's been practicing that much. They probably won't have been practicing for Akron quite as much, and it probably won't be that many race-specific strategies they have done. So, really, changing race, it's often more risky than it's worth at this point in the Akron metagame development. So, there's not a whole lot of point doing it. It's impressive when when it's pulled off, just because it is difficult. But, I don't see it being pulled off successfully at this point in the tournament. Or, if it is, then it just means that one player is much more skilled than the other. I don't expect numbers to do that, though. I wouldn't be surprised if Haiku did. And the game has started. There we go. So Haiku is playing blue. He is in the bottom left corner, while numbers is in the top right corner. So it's a far position, so longer rush distance, and so a harder time getting around. Numbers is going to be... Both players are going for perfect starts at the start. Haiku is going for Grekim, and numbers is going for Vekir. So here we are, as I mentioned. Haiku might be going for an off race on his first game. I wasn't sure, but he is apparently going for an office in his first game. He may have done something further in the future. I'm not sure. He did jump towards the future rather briefly, but that probably won't matter too much. The future attack, he's not focusing on it, or I don't know if it's doing an attack, just the future whatever action. He's not focusing on it, so it's probably not that important. He is going Grekum at first. I don't know if he's going to race switch. Before the tournament, his big style did include race switching, but he is moved away from that. He seems to be more focusing on playing a single race. And we would also know because he'd be fast-forwarding very rapidly towards the future, doing a big all-in attack, and then switching his race. So he seems to be going pretty securely for Grekum. Like I said, this is the first game, and so I wouldn't be surprised if he's trying to be risky just seeing what his opponent can do. Unless he has been practicing Grekum a lot. I haven't been paying as much attention to his practice schedules, but I'm fairly certain he's still most solid with CISO. So he is going for the standard Grekum strategy, although extending his Arcticus quite a ways out into his natural to make sure that his natural is actually protected, has that tanking Arcticus there to make sure that any attack moving units don't end up attacking too hard. Well, Numbers is sending out scouts to all of the bases to try to figure out where Haiku is. Haiku, I almost assume maybe going for... Oh, he is actually going for two races. Interesting. He is going for CISO towards the future and Grekum in the past. 
Not sure what exactly his motivation is for this, because CISO is going to be eliminated once the time wave showing, oh, hey, I'm playing Grekum comes along. The green time wave, actually, if not his own player wave, then the CISO player is going to be clearly eliminated. So I'm not sure why he's switched to CISO in the future when Grekum's going to be the more permanent race, but he is switching at least as some sort of distraction. While Numbers has gotten a scout almost to base, he has, from his point of view, seen the Arcticus in a couple minutes, and he... Actually, no, he has seen the Arcticus already. Sorry, that was his units down there. Yes, he's seen the Arcticus. He knows what's going on. The Haiku is actually sending the Arcticus all the way over to his base, while also building a bunch of Octos that look to be all directed at Numbers' base, and I don't see Numbers being able to hold this off unless he starts building some Zion Pulsers very quickly. Zion Church is actually going to be more useful. At least Zion Church to spot as they come in. Zion Pulsers just to barrage them as they walk in. While... Haiku is coming in with the big rush, so there is a big rush coming in, and all that I mentioned. Unless the CC, uh, the CC change might be in the past, might be before the red time wave, but I seriously doubt it. He seems to be going pretty committed for this all-in. I don't see why he'd be committed for this all-in. This is a game where numbers could quickly just go back and change the strategy to fix this up, so I wouldn't be surprised if right now he is switching to CISO, but no, he's continuing to say he's Grekum, so he's not switching to CISO from the looks of it. And yeah, his race choice has actually gone into the unplayable pass, so he is unable to switch. He is going pretty committed for this all-in, at least as an echo all-in. Okay, sort of a bluff all-in, so he's going to go in and undo it, but he seems very committed, even back when he was, when he was looking further in the past. He seemed pretty committed, so here comes the Octos. Auto defense has been researched, so Haiku is going to be fighting off some auto defense, but really the Octo can be able to throw the foundations and building far too quickly for auto defense to have an effect. Numbers really needed to make some Zion Pulsers and Zion Churchers to deal with this, but unfortunately, he assumes foundations, not enough units, and these Octos are going to be able to deal with one Zion Pulser has come in and is starting to deal quite a bit of damage to the Octos. They managed to take care of one Octo, two Octos will be going down quickly. Further back, we see that the Octos are still coming in, another foundation coming in. Numbers is trying to focus on building more foundations to help heal the depot, or heal this everything, really, heal the entire base. Zion Pulser is dealing a lot of damage, and Haiku is going to be. To get and they're not going to make a huge difference because, of course, Octus has been spotted. But the Zion Pulsar is going to be able to do a fair amount of damage, and it looks like the infantry is also come up to help deal damage as well. So, Numbers is trying to build a lot of units, but it may be too little too late. Another set of Octos and Faros has started attacking base, or will be going to attack base, but I do it further back, has just reviewed his main attack. He is, he is planking around Zion as well as attacking normally. While Numbers, from his point of view, has seen the Arcticus and is attacking it, but it likely won't make a big difference. Like, unless our Haiku is just sacrificed the Arcticus. No, I kind of doubt that. The Octos are dealing a lot of damage. This is back when we saw it before. As soon as the attack has changed too much, he is, however, focusing on the Depot and Arcticus. Sorry, Depot and Annex instead of focusing on the Foundation. Now he's to focus on the Foundation. Now he is trying to figure out what the micro best against. Numbers, from his point of view, has actually held off the attack with the Zion Pulses and is starting to attack the triad that is forming the flank. So Numbers is aware of that flanking triad and it looks like further back in the past he has his unit set up, his Zion Pulser set up to try to get rid of the Octos. The Octos are focusing down the foundation. We'll be able to focus down that Zion Pulser, but they're still focusing down the foundation because Haiku has tried to make him focus down the foundation to stop healing instead of focusing down units. But it looks like at this point the Zion Pulser will be able to get back in the depot. It's going to heal up and it should be able to kill off those Octos fairly quickly. But the other half dozen units coming in might actually turn the tide. Another Zion Pulser, I believe, was being built. Assuming that Numbers hasn't changed his orders too much, he does have the resources for it, so he could be building another Zion Pulser. More Octos coming in, the Zion Pulser is doing a very good job, very valiant job keeping the base safe. Going back into the depot and getting repairing again, getting cutting out and attacking further. But the Zion Pulser is dead, and we are not going to see it's going to work. The Zion is dead too, so it's going to be very difficult for Numbers to deal with this. He has jumped back further to try to change around his tactics. Unfortunately, he really didn't have a chance to upgrade skip teleport. That would help out a bit. He would need more units, though. The foundations were probably a mistake. They did buy him some time against the Octos originally, but I don't see them being as useful just because that was the foundation. That was 225 LC, and as you can see, he's bought him. He has 40 LC and 184 QP. If he had that 220 LC, he would be able to quickly build up three or four Zion Pulsers and maybe Zion Tercher. That would be more than enough to get rid of this force, but unfortunately he forgot to then, so Haiku will be able to only win this all in. Very effective. Wow, I'm quite surprised. Being, being in the game, it is. I'm actually quite surprised it worked out. So well done to Haiku for 